Whenever these two planets can join and later square off, that first square, the one we're seeing under this full moon, serves as a testing ground from that initial point of conjunction. Rewind back in time with me to the great Saturn-Jupiter conjunction of December 2020. This occurred around the time of the winter solstice in 2020, and it actually featured a triple conjunction between Saturn and Jupiter, 29 degrees of Capricorn and traveling together into zero degrees Aquarius, and Pluto within a loose five degree orb intensifying the energy. Jupiter and Saturn started a new cycle together after conjoining at that critical 29th anoretic degree of Capricorn and traveling into zero degrees Aquarius together. It's significant because Jupiter and Saturn, slower moving outer planets, only align but once every 20 years, bringing big changes and reconstruction both to our external and our internal realities, as above, so below, directly tied to our belief systems, since Jupiter rules our beliefs. The reconstructing and big changes we saw and are continuing to see are closely related to the signs of Capricorn and Aquarius and their themes. This is especially strong when you consider that Saturn is the traditional planetary ruler for both of those signs and is therefore incredibly strong in those signs. This ties in Pluto and Capricorn and Pluto and Aquarius. Pluto and Capricorn, served to transform our economy and our way of governing corporations, any system with a hierarchy or system of organization with a hierarchy. Pluto and Aquarius serves to transform the collective as it's awakening. That great conjunction of December 2020 will take a full 20 years to unfold. It was recently reactivated by the July 21st full moon, 29 degrees Capricorn, and it will be reactivated again every time the moon conjoins Pluto, especially at the 29th degree of Capricorn, the last of which will occur the night of the United States presidential election on Tuesday, November 5th. In my Capricorn New Moon and Aquarius New Moon videos back in January and February 2024, that 2024 is a repeat of 2020 in several ways with some caveats. Well, the caveat is you, the collective. This time, we're not gonna take it, at least not laying down. These three squares between Saturn and Jupiter, beginning in August, reoccurring in December and again in spring 2025, serve as reality checkpoints. Something new that we started in the past four years, back at the end of 2020 and the beginning of 2021, it could be an awareness, a way of being or thinking, a relationship, a career, or a place of living. It all depends on the house it falls into in your personal natal chart and your rising sign and what's aspecting that is going to be tested and challenged and potentially restructured until spring 2025 and even into the summer of 2025 when Jupiter transits cardinal water sign and its sign of exaltation, Cancer. Jupiter is about our beliefs and our worldview or philosophies. Saturn-Jupiter aspects are felt strongly in our personal lives throughout the collective because it affects one's outlook on life. In their most basic interpretation, Jupiter-Saturn contexts symbolize a choice between the faith which stems from an intuitive recognition of purpose in life and the fear which stems from identification with and consequent control by the forces of one's environment. The squares and oppositions are associated with a kind of seesaw temperament, which swings between the extremes of hopefulness, Jupiter, and despair, Saturn, and can be highly correlated with self-unaliving. This is from Liz Green, Saturn, a new look at an old devil, page 154. Be very careful not to seesaw between a blind optimism, toxic positivity, untempered with discipline, and a blind pessimism that sees no possible hope for the future or happiness or meaning. Squares between Saturn and Jupiter suggest an attitude of fatalism. Mark Edmund Jones calls this the last chance lifetime archetype. And this is also from Liz Green, Saturn, a new look at an old devil. Whenever Saturn and Jupiter square, there's a sharp dichotomy between intuitive perception and practical observation that can lead to issues of free choice for the individual in the collective. This is from page 152. Saturn will show us the limitations and the boundaries and how we can make pivots or changes. This is where free will and willpower come into play. The more we work with the energy of the cosmos, the less likely we are to become a victim of it. We don't like victims on this channel. We don't play the victim. We're empowered, we're warriors. It's all about how greatly the individual, you, live with integrity. It matters not which religion or set of values you adopt or follow, but only that you integrate those values into your being, living in the image of God, whatever you deem that to be. Every religion has a set of values or principles and a concept of God consciousness. Christ consciousness in Christianity is described as transcending the limits of time and space and operating from a higher perspective. It's said to involve living in one's light body while still inside of the physical body and viewing life experiences from a loving, more compassionate and accepting perspective. It matters not to me what you call it, only that you embody an elevated way of being and thinking that transcends beyond the trappings or limitations 
of fear and the materialistic world. I speak about Christianity and Buddhism because those are the religions that I studied and am most familiar with, but please feel free to share in the comments your background and anything you would like to add to this conversation. Christ, Buddha, Lao Tu, Moses, Muhammad, who have reached this state of enlightenment that warrants being called a Christ or a God figure. In Buddhism, this is called the Buddha mind. And as the Encyclopedia Britannica puts it, in ancient India, the title Buddha referred to any enlightened being who has awakened from the slumber of ignorance and therefore achieved freedom from suffering. According to various traditions of Buddhism, Buddhas have existed in the past and they will continue to exist in the future. Many believe that hell is actually right here, right now, in this 3D earth and separation from God consciousness. So what we're discussing with any aspect to Jupiter is the universal or spiritual similarities of the concept of God or universal consciousness that is the essence within Man's Search for Meaning. If you haven't read Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, I encourage you to do so. In Man's Search for Meaning, Viktor Frankl explores how many find meaning in the most unusual places and difficult of circumstances. In his autobiographical account, Frankl describes his lessons learned as a Holocaust survivor and how his experiences within a concentration camp shaped his understanding and meaning of life itself. I want to share a couple quotes from Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. When we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. This is why rock bottom is so profoundly powerful in waking people up. Everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. So this Saturn Jupiter square and the three that we'll see upcoming between now, August 2024, December 2024, and spring 2025 won't just affect those that we see as outright evil, but it will affect those who live in ignorance avoiding spiritual growth and personal accountability altogether. If it's your relationship that's being tested, the tests and challenges could make the relationship crumble, or they could present opportunities to grow and evolve stronger together. Saturn is not a bad guy. Saturn brings rewards for those who learn to work with and master Saturn's energy. Saturn only brings negative karma. Remember, karma is neutral. It's neither negative nor positive. It simply is. What you put out into the world, you get back. Saturn only brings negative karma when we try to skirt personal accountability or take shortcuts. As the ideologies of the individual people are being restructured, so too are the larger authorities and systems of government we adhere to. To find where this is most impacting your chart and where the mutable T-square is affecting you, look where you have 17 and 18 degrees plus or minus 5 degrees of the mutable signs. So we'll say 12 to 13 to 23 degrees of the mutable signs. Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. To see where the fixed T-square will be affecting your chart, Focus on where 27 degrees of the fixed sign falls within your chart, plus or minus five degrees. So this would cover the territory of 22 degrees of the fixed signs into about the third degree of the mutable sign that comes right after. So we're looking at the cusps of Taurus and Gemini, the cusps of Leo and Virgo, the cusps of Scorpio and Sagittarius, and the cusps of Aquarius and Pisces being impacted most significantly. Last but not least, we have a cardinal T-square activated by Ceres in Capricorn, squaring off against the opposition between the lunar nodes. The lunar nodes are always opposite one another. The north node is entering the first decan. It always travels heads backwards into the first decan of Aries, the north node of fate and destiny, aligning with our autonomy and our independence on a collective level as we see people on a global scale protesting and fighting for their rights. Opposite the south node of karmic fate and destiny in Libra, on the Widowmaker, eight degrees Libra, shedding patterns of self-disempowerment through codependency, people-pleasing, and being a doormat, letting others dominate you or domineer you by failing to assert healthy boundaries or stand up for Thank yourself. Thank you for watching. If you're still with me, you're a real one. Drop your current most used emoji in the comments. If you took anything away from this video, we ask that you like, comment, share the content, and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, we know that you'll enjoy the full playlist and this additional video. Thank you so much. Love you and see you soon.